Cone Bone Wad. Good evening, mass murderers. It is I, Loki the Mad Titan, and welcome to episode four. I should have said hoarders. Episode four <laughs> of Diary of a Madman. Right off the bat, I'll say I am still sick. I had a little bit of uh, extra junk in my inventory I need to get rid of. So we uh, we took care of that. I don't know why I had so many lamps and <laughs> other stuff in my inventory. <coughs> and there's the first cough already. Again, forgive me, I am still sick. I tend to get the cough for quite a while anytime I get sick. I do lean away from the mic and do cover my mouth and punch myself in the face and everything humanly possible to not cough into the mic but you still might hear it so my apologies if you're new to the channel those are your roast growing the guys your mas. if you're new to the series hajimi mash day and if you're a regular okai reading this i welcome home thank you so much for tuning in with me today this is as i stated quite possibly the final episode it should be of diary of a madman all right so why are the, the two naked old men are running around? Who set them free? Alright, wait, what's happening over there? What is happening? What is happening? Ain't my fight. Shit, a lot of blood. Who are they beating up? What's You are seriously pissing me off! Why are you beating up? Whoever that is. All right, who's who are you, <coughs> Denny? What's up, Denny? Well, hello. Crazy, huh? You think someone ought to step in and do something? Uh, Denny, you you smoking? Right What's here. going on yeah. here? I always enjoy a good fight. This is none of my business. Just tell me what happened. Yeah. What's going on here? The guy getting beat up, George Adams. He's a good Samaritan. Myrna's store was getting robbed by looters. And George was fending them off. A few bystanders called out for help. When security arrived, the looters ran away. So they grabbed George, threw him to the ground, and started beating him. So are you actually trying to do something about it? He's a kid. Why, <laughs> Why are you asking him? He's going to do something about it. Put a big dumb idiot in charge. What could possibly go wrong? I'm pretty sure I'm in charge. That's the price we pay for security? You're kidding, right? What What do you mean that's a price we pay for security? That doesn't make any damn sense at all. You're kidding, right? You're not from around here, are you? I'm the mayor! <laughs> that's the price we pay for security. Just following orders, right? Put a big dumb idiot in charge. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Maybe you can bribe <coughs> them with a donut or something. Okay. Uh, can we progress the conversation here? All these choices are not progressing the conversation. So, are you actually trying to do something about it? Do I really look that young? I'm not talking to the cops. You do it. Okay. So, hey, son why, of a bitch! Why are you? Why are they beating that man? Hi. Back away, please. We've got this covered. I don't think you do. Uh, have here. you got all the gear you need? Without. I understand. No, I'm sorry. I just want to know what happened. Never mind. Sorry for bothering you. have to explain what's going on. You'll have to explain what's going on. We responded to a robbery in progress. Found the suspect attempting to loot Diamond City Surplus. Uh, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You caught the wrong... You sure you caught the right guy? Sounds like you did the right thing. You sure about that? Pretty sure that's the guy. He had a syringe of psycho on him. Claims it wasn't his, that he grabbed it away from a junkie he was trying to help get clean. Yeah, right. Like, I haven't heard that one before. What if you misunderstood what you saw and overreacted? Possible, but not likely. We're authorized to use severe force in a felony situation to prevent the suspect from escaping. Or, if we have probable cause to believe that the suspect poses a threat of serious injury to ourselves or others. When making an arrest, we never know whether the culprit has a hidden weapon on the person. First priority is to protect ourselves, especially in cases where the perp may be jacked up on psycho. 
You're beating the, 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 the piss out of him over there, though. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Not gonna lie, that happens from time to time. When split-second decisions are involved, we can misjudge a situation and arrest the wrong person while in pursuit of a suspect. Especially if the suspect matches the description of the perp we're looking for. But suspects always deny wrongdoing. Frankly, we're not interested in hearing it. Best thing a person can do when arrested is to remain calm and respectful. Try to remember who is there, who may be a witness, and what you saw prior to your arrest so you can clear your name later if you're innocent. But don't try to interfere with the arrest or talk us out of it. We're just doing our job, and it's not an easy one. Alright, you sound like Harley. I'm not gonna say he sounds like he did the right That's thing. It, huh? what the What's your take on Diamond City? It was a peaceful place until that Gino Artest incident. Look, I'm not saying what happened was right. We all make mistakes sometimes. But that paper blew it way out of proportion. What do you mean? What happened? It's that reporter, Piper. She got everyone all riled up with her activist news stories about police brutality. Didn't even reach out to us for a comment on the article, or to get her facts straight. And now she's arguing for disbanding Diamond City security. Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, you are actively beating a man while I'm having a conversation. Would you explain it? mind explaining that to me from what I just heard? It might be a bad idea. I'm sure it's not personal in the world of insane ideas that's high on the list. Would you mind explaining that to me? I'll tell you what's really going on. Piper may be a pain in my ass, but the real problem is those upper stands bastards on the Diamond City Council. They're using the most desperate people in this town as pawns to consolidate their power over us. And then blaming DC security for their policy failures when the decisions they force on us end up in disaster. I was sympathetic to the tragedy at first, but now? We're done pretending this looting has anything to do with the killing of Gino Artest. And she <coughs> want anyone fanatical enough to still believe that. What we need right now is to enforce the law while we've still got a city left to protect. Look, sorry, I can rant sometimes. I need to get back to dealing with this perk. Anything else you needed? Can you, can you stop beating, <laughs> stop beating him? Are you sure you're going to risk being wrong about this? Uh, free George, I don't want to see an innocent man harmed. I don't want to see an innocent man <coughs> come to harm over a false accusation. You need to let him go. I suppose we can make an exception this one time. All right, boys. We're letting him off with a warning. Let's wrap this up. With a warning? You've been... You've been beating him for like 10 minutes now. Just my good calm is paying off. I'm eating. What is it? God, did you see that explosion? The old CIT ruins. They're they're just a big crater now. Hey George, what? you need you a, got a staring problem? You need a stim pack, buddy? Ahem. <clears throat> huh? You okay, man? You hippie? Huh? Nah, you don't got nothing else to say. Alright, public occurrences. Let's go talk to uh somebody. I like how these guys put themselves Feel back. that filth down in the lower houses? I wouldn't keep my worst Brahmin in one. This Only good for lesser men who have no value. This is why you're naked, chained up with a gun right in front of you. Because you're horrible people. Alright, so... Who am I talking to? Nobody. I'm going to be doing a... All right. Well, I can't read that. Let's try that again. Yeah, I know what's with that glitch with the weird glowing bright screen. Come on. Come on, Piper's Field Notes. Oh my god. This is going to be great. Because uh, talking triggers me coughing. I really haven't been coughing all day. And I sit down to do this and immediately start coughing. Huh. <sighs>
exclusive inside vault 81 what is the brotherhood of steel owed to the silver shroud ghoul beaten to death by dc security that seems the uh most relevant gino our test killing reignites calls to repeal sec sec uh, secrecy laws it wasn't tear gas time to break up the dc police union the gas line treason Letter to the editor, editor, poem from a looter, proposed Falion's basement ad copy. All right. Well, <coughs> I am drinking. As always, this episode is not sponsored by Mountain Dew Major Melon Zero. I decided to go with something a little, little funky today, a little flavor. I like the Zero version of this better than the regular version. The regular version is a little too sweet. We will do our best exclusive inside Vault 81. If you grew up outside of Diamond City, you probably dreamed about the vaults. Few of these pre-war havens survive intact, yet they have taken a mythical status. Underground cities offering a trouble-free life. For the very first time, we offer you an insight into the Commonwealth's only functioning vault, a glimpse of life in the secretive Vault 81. For the outsider, first impressions are off-putting. With residents shielded from wastelands, wealth of diseases, and radiation hazards, decontamination is a must, and every carefully vetted veteran is treated with suspicion. For those used to Diamond City shacks and colorful markets, the sterile metal halls take some getting used to. Vault dwellers might not know any difference, but this reporter conditions felt distinctly cramped. For this reporter, uh, conditions felt distinctly cramped. The benefits, though, are undeniable. Scientists grow food in abundance, while water and electricity are free-flowing. Free Not flea-flowing. Every family has a room. Every child goes to school, where they learn the skills they'll need to maintain the vault. Trusted traders keep the store replenished, and everyone eats together with no present dangers. Only the guards carry weapons. For those taking that as an invitation forget it there's no getting past the giant vault door it's a strict life but a safe one maybe even from the institute if you can offer your services to keep it that way they might just be happy to have you this reporter isn't going anywhere yet but that childhood dream is still very much alive that was cute what is the brotherhood of steel we've all seen its airship Trundling across the Commonwealth sky, I bl I blew up I blew up the airship. It's gone. I blew I blew it blew it all up. And buzzing vertebrae in tow, they're loud, shiny, and seemingly settling in for the long haul. I I, I blew I blew them up, so no, they're not. But why are they here? What do they want? Do they have anything to fear? Do we have anything to fear? Watch to find out. Those who've traveled outside the Commonwealth or spoken to those who have will know that the Brotherhood has a presence across the country. Beginning far to the west, remnants of the country's army used their power armor to impose order began to, and began to rebuild. Over time, they became obsessed with finding and studying pre-war technologies, gaining a reputation as overzealous but effective wardens in wars against Subunts and the mysterious Enclave. <coughs> there is one clear motive. For the Brotherhood's arrival in the Commonwealth, the Institute, whether it wants to harvest their technology, learn from them, or destroy them, is unclear. I also blew it up the Institute, so not an issue. But it aims. But its aims are rarely peaceful. It seems likely that an invading army will need food and ammunition. I'd say we don't give them a single sugar bomb. If the Brotherhood of Steel really intends to uproot the Institute, they need to understand what they're fighting and who they're fighting for. They need to talk with us and understand why people are currently finding it hard to trust their own families. Two mysterious factions in the Commonwealth is too, too many. <coughs> Ode to the Silver Shroud. Are we doing a song now? Let's grab a sip. One of the founding principles of Diamond City is the rule of law. It's the reason you probably won't be stabbed in the neck for a Nuka-Cola. Or witness an impromptu duel with rocket launchers. 
but out in the Commonwealth, most people don't have the same security when life is so fleeting. It takes a special kind of person to take up someone else's fight. As with all good stories, this begins with a bloody battle. Patrols near Good Neighbor drawn to a commotion at the old Hubert's Commerce store spotted a stranger in grey garb leaving the premises. Well armed looter, nothing particularly unusual there, yet soon after reports began the merge of unexplained deaths in the ghoul friendly neighborhood. That may not seem far out of character either. But despite what our illustrious mayor would have us believe, Good Neighbor isn't lawless. No, these stricken socialites had two distinguishing features. They were well-known criminals, and they were found with a calling card. Their assassin claimed to be no less than the Silver Shroud. Most of us have heard the pre-war broadcast, yes, all six of them. Until now, they seemed like elaborate fictions, tall tales for a tranquil time. We live in an irradiated wasteland, and there still aren't any superheroes. Yet my sources were insistent. The eponymous station began calling the Shroud himself to action, and somebody was responding. More corpses piled up, and the station operator was apparently taken hostage. If he is truly real, released into the world after all this time, like our vault dwelling friend, or just a way to draw listeners from the jewel's own Travis Miles. In the end, we may never know. Silver Shroud Radio has gone off the air for now. The apparent showdown unresolved. Perhaps the Shroud really is out there dealing justice to the many rogues and vagabonds of the commonwealth for now keep your ears tuned to the radio and your hand on your holster ghoul beaten to death by dc security yesterday a man wearing a gas mask shopping at diamond city surplus was accused of using counterfeit body caps to make a purchase according to the proprietor myrna the caps were obviously fake and the Shopper refused to return the purchase when challenged. Security was called, and when they arrived and removed the man's gas mask, he was revealed to be a ghoul named Gino Artest. According to the security arrests, Artest had prior run-ins with the law, so Artest resisted arrest. He was shot with pepper spray and forced to the ground face down. <coughs> My apologies. Eyewitnesses' accounts differ, but one thing everyone agrees on is our test was struck multiple times with baseball bats and is now dead. Ghouls outside Diamond City and some local DC residents feel security's response was excessive and have vowed to stage protests. In the wake of Gene Artest's death at the hands of Diamond City security, residents have again been demanding a rollback of Diamond City's expansive police secrecy rules. <coughs> Jesus, struggling a little bit here. The secrecy law shields police misconduct records from release. Its scope has steadily expanded over the decades to hide wide swaths of related records from the public, including police shooting reports, transcripts of administrative reviews, and other data on police use of force. On Friday, an unarmed source of the Diamond City Council, unnamed source, not unarmed, source of the Diamond City Council said they were considering reform of the notorious law, although he didn't go so far as to say he supported repealing it entirely. <coughs> this law has been a thorn in the side of citizens, rights advocates, investigative reporters, and families of police shooting victims. Momentum to repeal it grew following the 2285 killing Jerome Ward by the security officer Brett Gugliano, whose misconduct reports became public only after they were leaked to public occurrences. In 2286, public occurrences may obtained. <coughs> Very sorry, an additional 137 D-Security misconduct records threw a similar leak. The resulting investigation identified 22 D-Security employees who had committed offenses serious enough to warrant firing, bribery, stealing, excessive force, yet were allowed to keep their job. The records embarrassed Mayor McDonough enough that he vowed to soften the interpretation of the law, but we're still waiting on the promised reforms. You know, Artest's tragic death has led to heartbreak and protest 
but it can also lead to much needed reform, said Amelia Gunderson, head of the group Diamond City United for Justice, in an exclusive interview with Public Occurrences. This lack of transparency into the disciplinary process is wrong, it makes law enforcement less accountable, and it makes our community less safe. Words we would all be wise to consider. Thinking, speaking of uh, being wise to consider, I am considering uh, not reading the rest of these since apparently I am struggling a bit reading. It wasn't tear gas. Let's see how long this one is. Three pages. <coughs> we'll give it a try. It wasn't tear gas. According to, according to Councilman, Councilwoman Linwood, she didn't order these security to shoot tear gas at innocent protesters in the outfield so she and her fellow councilors could pose for a pic with an upside down Bible in front of the wall. Wow, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, <laughs> current references, um, current within the past couple of year references. The truth is that D.C. security bombarded a law-abiding crowd with a gaseous substance that produces tears. You see the difference? Not really. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it wasn't tear gas. It was pepper spray. Uh, we're talking about this now, and that's what council members in the D.C. police union want. The more time people spend debating the difference between tear gas and smoke canisters and pepper balls, the less focus there is on the fact that DC leadership had peaceful citizens attacked for a photo op so they could pretend to be brave and religious. This is the same tactic we've seen again and again from Diamond City's leadership. Deny, shift stories, quibble over inane particulars. It really doesn't matter that most residents don't really buy the administration's deflection and lies. The point is to shift the public conversation, give upper standing lackeys an easy retort to the critics, and to present enough reasonable doubt that folks, not especially tuned to politics, tune out. Getting people to see this as just another partisan squabble is essential to covering up the fullest nature of the stunt of the council woman pulled in Diamond City Outfield. Accuracy in the media is crucial, and public occurrences has often been the first to point out when the prevailing narrative is wrong. The DC Council might not want to call the substance DC security deployed tear gas, but under the common understanding of what's a riot control agent or less lethal chemical weapon, it was. Took a quick little break, tried to clear out my sinuses a little bit. Time to break up the DC Police Union? Too often when DC security uses deadly force, the DC Police Union has been there to prevent accountability. In April this year, DC security raided the house of John and Leslie Bridger. They used a battering ram to break down the door in the middle of the night and without identifying themselves, fatally shot Nathaniel, the bridge's youngest child. The purpose of the raid was never disclosed. Nathaniel's death resulted in calls for the officers involved to be fired, but Mayor McDonough warned that the process would be slow. A significant part of why he expected it to take so long, he said, was the city's collective bargaining agreement with the D.C. Police Union. McDonough lamented the process, saying he recognizes the system is not the best, <coughs> best practice for our fine city. The union, meanwhile, has expressed outrage that a D.C. City Council member described Mr. Bridger, who fired at security during the raid, as a hero. This is the union's focus, not demanding justice for a child killed by police in his own home, but demanding an apology from local politician who had the audacity to praise the citizen for defending his family during a botched police raid. The union's goal, it seems, is not to protect the police from public criticism, not to protect the public from bad policing, so what ended up happening to the officers involved? While they were temporarily suspended as of last month, the officers were not only reinstated but given full back pay. The union defends the narrow interests of DC security at the expense of public safety. <coughs> <coughs> they exist to demand that residents, via taxation, pay for dangerous, even deadly negligence to stop bad cops and police abuse. We can no longer turn a blind eye 
to the Union. Oh my god. Is there a better way? Perhaps we need only look south to Slocum Joe Stadium in Providence, Rhode Island. For decades, Slocum City was a dreadfully violent place by all counts in 2278. With the murder rate approaching record highs, police acknowledge that they have all but ceded the stadium to crime. City officials said the local police union was to blame. Their union contract ensured the cops on the payroll were being paid too much and weren't getting the job done. So Slocum City made a radical decision. Fire the police, all of them. That year, they began the process of terminating all the officers and hiring a new force, initially made up of less expensive non-union labor. It was a decision meant to address both budget and crime problems. Naturally, the police union opposed the plan, saying it was definitely a form of union busting. City officials, the union said, were relying on the reform that was unproven, untested, putting faith in an agency that did not yet exist. By many measures, however, the unproven and untested new police force worked after disbanding the city police and reorganizing it to a new force with lower pay, a focus on rebuilding trust with the community, murders declined. Reports are that Slocum City is still dangerous compared to other local towns, but there has been clear progress in terms of reducing crime and improving community relations. Police are public servants granted enormous power over citizenry. Citizenry. <laughs> citizenry. Woo! They are tasked with protecting the public and serving their best interests, or their interests, excuse me. Police unions, in contrast, are tasked with protecting police and serving their interests. Even a direct contravention of serving the public. That distinction makes them a barrier to reforms aimed <coughs> at improving public safety and increasing oversight of how law enforcement behaves. If union busting is what it takes to reduce the precarious pernicious excuse me, influence of DC police union of on local security, then it's time to bust the union. And I'm making an executive decision. I'm just going to read in my head <laughs> the last couple ones. I'm so sorry. I didn't know there was going to be this much reading. And uh, I'm normally somewhat okay. Except for all the successive reading is just really triggering me for some reason. The gas line treason. Alright, which is the... One that we needed. All right, so this is talking about Guy Fox. All right, cool. Letters to the editor. So obviously just pause if I'm going too fast. <coughs> okay. I don't really need any of this stuff, but there's some goodies up here. I sincerely, honestly, and truly apologize. I, I, I'm, I, I'm trying my best. Trying my best. That's all I can really say. The option is don't make videos at all, <laughs> or make videos and just. Where are you guys running around again? Old men. Naked old men. Get back to your punishment place. You guys playing tag? I need some backup over here. Yes. Wait, m we need more backup. Oh. Who are we beating now? Ah. Why are you beating Travis now? Hi there. Can you believe this shit? No. What the hell is going on now? What the hell is going on here? I take it you weren't listening to the radio. What? Sorry. No. When Travis decides to take a stand on an issue. You know things are screwed up. I'm here to help. Tell me what happened. After the George Adams beating, 
Travis Leave went on the alone. air and suggested DC security shouldn't be so violent. That people should stand up for themselves against Can't abusive cops. And the council should implement some reforms. We got a situation here. I, I couldn't agree more? Couldn't agree more. After that, more violence broke out. The council needed a scapegoat. They held Travis responsible for inciting the violence, and ordered DC security to arrest him. A few citizens tried to stop the cops. That sergeant you talked to earlier even walked off the job. But the cops that stayed on decided to follow orders, and to make an example out of Travis. So they dragged him out of the radio station, and started beating him in front of everyone. We've got to do something about it. Oh, yeah, that's not okay. Kill Travis? You're terrible DJ Travis. I'm ending this right now. Rescue Travis. There may not be an easy solution to this. Implement reform. I'd like a peaceful solution. Um. Yeah, have any suggestions? A uh, kid that I'm taking advice from? Have any suggestions? I'm not taking sides. I just want everyone to get along. This place has enough problems. We don't need to be burning it down. It's not right, and it's not going to change anything. I understand the anger. I do. Riots are the language of the unheard. Damn right. But we're all stuck here for a while. Let's at least try to work it out. All right. Oh, I'd prefer a peaceful solution. I mean, uh, uh, oh, I kind of want to go murder those cops to death. Oh. I'd prefer a peaceful solution. I'm sure we can work this out. That would probably be best. Hope you didn't run into any trouble. Nope. Okay, so what's what we got here? You have chosen to reform Diamond City security. Accepting the following reforms will stop the civil unrest in Diamond City. One, end qualified immunity for officers. Yes, agree. Two, unseal records. Yes, agree. Establish a civilian career. Yes, agree. Ban police use chokeholds. Agree. 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 Police to engage in retaliatory force only, enforcing laws of defensive nature only, bound by the same laws they enforce and fully accountable for their actions. Didn't you? That bridge across the river. You have selected to reform the security civil unrest will now end. River. Super mutants use it as an ambush point. Been a while since we had a wedding. Man and a robot. Strange, <laughs> but I don't think God will mind. All right, so I mean, is that it? Yeah. Well, hello. What's new? What's news? So wait, that was it? We're done? All right, so there was many ways to end that quest. I, Nothing I, to see here. I know that, but I guess that that was that was it. They just, they just stop beating Travis, and we're we're all cool with them. Yep, because everything else I got there is things that don't work. All right, I mean, well now I'm not entirely sure. I heard there was some trouble over at that Vault 81. Something about a quarantine? You know anything about that? that I saw the- Ugh! Find them! Ugh. I decided these are the Damn. bad cops. Hey, these- <laughs> These are the bad cops. Uh, these ones. Uh, these are the uh, bad uh, cops. So... I need to punish the bad cops. We got a situation here. Ah! All right. So there. I punished the bad cops. And everybody's okay. <coughs> everybody's okay with that. Now, I thought there was a way for me to blow up Diamond City, though, too. But I'm not seeing that as an option. I guess maybe if I wanted, if I wanted them to keep fighting, if I chose the other option. 
You're dead. <gasps> yeah, the ghouls are still here. <laughs> I like how some of them are hostile towards me. Like Takahashi? Just Takahashi. <coughs> Why is Takahashi the only one angry at me? I know that was super gross. I'm sorry. I, I didn't really have a choice. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm so confused. I guess that's the end of Diary of a Madman. So we can jump into uh, 50 Ways to Die Dr. Nix, which apparently is going to be much more puzzle oriented. So I'm very uh, curious as to how exactly that plays out. But, uh, I don't know. This was a short episode. I expected a little bit more. I don't know exactly what I expected. What's that noise? But I did expect Let's a little bit this. more. Let's do this. Let's do it. Incoming. Hey, that's what you want. Run! Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna let my drug dealer friend handle my light work, and I'm gonna leave. You're in Diamond City now, pal. Those were the bad cops. They had to die. <laughs> Hey, who's this? Is Taka Takahashi followed me out? <laughs> he followed me all the way out. I can see him coming. Well, that's hilarious. <laughs> He's just throwing ball tops. Where's my other guy? Where'd he go? Did he get in there? No? I think my guys are invincible. So I think we'll win this fight eventually. If it goes on long enough. No, my guy's not getting in there. Get in, in the fight. Yeah, get in there. I got you. Get it. Get in. Go in. I guess for some reason he won't path past here. Oh, wait, there we go. I kind of don't want to talk hot to die either, so I'm just going to run away. And whatever happens there, happens there. Not my fight. I took out the bad cops. I'm the hero of the story. The part-time temporary mayor. Took out the bad cops. What time to Who's die? Now? <laughs> Not impressed with the suicider. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. What we got up here? An albino rag sack and an reed rag sack? Alright, glowing. That's how I hunt. Chainsaw Hunter. All right, what's happening over here? This is more action, some explosions.
All right, so we gotta I gotta log out and turn on uh, 50 Ways to Die, at Doctor Nix, and we'll start up. I don't know. We'll start up in Sanctuary just for fun. And we'll see what that mod is all about. And then that's uh, that's it for the Thuggy Smurf R D D C C C, his partner that did the first mod, Fusion City Rising. So we will save it here. I might as well store all my junk to drop my inventory down. I swear I didn't even pick up that much stuff and somehow I still have extra weight. Alright, we will save it here. Just do a new, drop a new save. With all that being said, is that Preston? How? You know what? Since we talked. I'm feeling swell. How? Look at the two of us here in Sanctuary. How is Preston here? Prepared for the future. How is... What is happening? How is Preston here? What? What? <laughs> this is the worst ending possible. Preston is still alive. And he's still here. Last time we saw him, I murdered him and he was clipped through the wall over here. But no, he's just sitting over here, alive. I don't understand. At all. Well... We saved it already. This has been the fourth and final episode of Diary of a Madman. I am Loki the Mad Titan. With all that being said, I bid you adieu. Goodbye and good night, mass murderers. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'm so very sorry about the coughing. Have a good night.